we expect to challenge for the title every year, every year. Some years you're, you know, it comes together with the efforts and the design and you get a chance. It's set point McMaster. It's what we have been training for all year. Until you're actually in it, you don't really realize how special it's gonna be. In that moment, it can feel like absolutely everything and it can feel like your world is coming crashing down. Set to Sully Sundara, off the top of the block, drops to the open floor, and the McMaster Marauders are going to the OUA Championship. Walking to that gym against Queens, there was just a feeling. And there's a feeling of this confidence that we had. We know they're an incredible team. We know they have like an unreal roster that's uh, very deep, but we also had a, a lot of belief in the work that we had done and a lot of belief in our roster. Going into that weekend, we felt like all the pressure was on them. They were the hosts, they were the higher seed. They had beaten us twice, we hadn't beaten them at all. So we sort of embraced that underdog mentality and we all believed that we could beat them. For us to like show up the way we did in that game with the mentality we did was major and carrying it into the next week is not easy. Um, Brock was a new challenge and that gym is so hard to play in. We just knew we had to go in with confidence. Like we're the underdog in the situation. Like they've won back-to-back -back championships, but we have to go in with the confidence and like the knowledge that we can take this, we can win this. Every person on that team had been in that position before. Um, and a lot of them, this is like their third or their fourth OUA finals. For us, you know, we hadn't been in that position. I felt like an underdog, not because we were any worse than them, but just because we had less experience. All right, enjoy every minute of this, the good and the bad, hey? Eh? Roll five. takes the first one. Faust rolls one in, and point number one goes to Brock. It's gonna be Julian again from the outside. Up over the block. Ainsworth can't get there in time, and it's two to two.
the disappointment of the loss, we handled it at different levels. I think emotionally, collectively, that team has found strength in itself. Right, so I'm very, very proud of them as a collective. Head up, head up, head up, head up. All right, we're going to be a long drive up right. It's going to suck. All right, hold your heads up high. We want a silver medal, and that matters. Okay? Let them have their moment. We have more volleyball to play. It was definitely tough. I knew, like, that was my only shot at, like, winning an OUA championship. I didn't want silver, but like, it still means like the world to me to know that we overcame all the obstacles that we've like faced this year as a team to like get to that point. I think if you had told our team at the beginning of the year that we would be playing in the OUA finals, we would have been like pretty happy and pretty proud of ourselves. So I think trying to like celebrate that that's still an accomplishment, although it like wasn't our end goal. But being able to shut out the noise and really be in a game that none of them had ever been in before um, and show the fight that they did, I was really proud. Because we lost, it was sort of a little bit easier for me to like turn it around and just like focus on the next goal, knowing like there's still more games ahead. So many student athletes, even really high level ones, never get to play at this tournament. We have the opportunity to play and to compete with a team that's good enough to compete at that tournament for sure. Fortunately enough this year, we were able to go to nationals regardless. So trying to move on from that game as fast as we could and look up to what's next, I think was really important for us. It's hard though, like it's hard to deal with the disappointment and nationals is only five, six days later. The mental game is half the whole game, you know? I still feel like we can always like be one step better. And so I think peaking at the right time would be awesome and, and letting that carry us wherever it carries us. It's kind of fun playing a new team that like you haven't seen before because like they also like don't know you. So yeah. you sort of get to play freely and it's in front of our home crowd, which I think is gonna just be lots of fun. And I think we're all just like looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, win or lose, I think it's going to be a great match and we're just going to like go out swinging. We're going about our daily lives because we're at home still. We're like sleeping in our own beds. We're still going to classes. We're coming and we're like practicing in the same gym that we always practice in. So for the first part of the week, it just felt like a normal week. Um, but then when the team started showing up and you would like see them around playing, and then, of course, like all the attention. Um, I actually saw myself on a billboard while I was driving, so that was cool. Um, and then, yeah, it's just, it's a lot going on and it's a lot of fun. And it's also really hard to like stay focused just because you're like trying to take everything in. And like, yeah, like you said, the awards banquet, that's sort of, I would say like when it felt like, okay, you know, nationals is like started now. And then you try to go about your same routine but there's just like this extra feeling of like this game is like so much bigger than like any game that I've played in before. Outside hitter number four, Olivia Olive, you know, has accomplished a lot in her first season, which I think if she was in any year, it would have been impressive what she's done. But considering that she's a first year, it is just that much more impressive. One time I asked her, like, what does she think about when she's like passing serve receiving? She told me that she is wanting them to serve at her. And if she makes a mistake, she wants them to serve at her again because she wants to prove them wrong. She carries herself with so much confidence and 
She wants to perform. She wants to be there in the big moments. And that is something that's difficult for any athlete, let alone when you're new to a team. A lot of players at that age struggle to have confidence and that's what affects your ability to play. Just watching the difference in her ability to perform because of that attitude. This sounds kind of like corny, but like believing in yourself and like that's where I get my confidence, like trusting in your abilities, like everything is attainable if you really trust yourself. At the beginning of the year, I lived by this quote. It was, discipline beats motivation. If you just rely on motivation all the time, you're not going to really succeed. So I think the discipline was super important and just showing up all the time, giving 100% or giving as much as you could that day. I think like it's something that I talk through my club players with because people think it's cocky and it's arrogant to be like, I'm the best player in this gym. Like I'm going to beat everyone across the net from me. And I think like you don't have to say those comments out loud, but it's really important that you feed yourself those comments. Teaching young girls that it's not cocky, like I said, not arrogant to like have all this belief in yourself and have all of the belief in the world in yourself is huge. And I think that's what Liv is really good at. She's good at having that internal confidence and really pushing through the game. I think I remember the specific point that she was out there and she just made this incredibly like veteran shot in a really tight moment in the game. Oh, baby, what a shot. What a hit by Julian. So impressive to, and such guts going up there as a first year and just so much confidence. And I was like, that kid, she is a baller. Like she's gonna do whatever she can in any moment of the game. That's a moment that many other rookies would have shied away from and not even wanted the ball. And she's out there demanding the ball and then making a shot that like fourth, fifth year players can't even make sometimes. All the little girls who I used to be like, I want them to feel like they can play at this level because I can play at this level. It is attainable and it is possible for a first year to get as much time as I did and get these experiences. Hosting nationals is like a whole different can of worms because you know the whole year that that's where you're going to be. And regardless of your finish in the OUA season, you know you will be in a quarterfinal. So it's working towards that the entire year. Yes, you're working towards it if you're not hosting nationals, but you're not guaranteed that moment. We were guaranteed that moment. So it's kind of always been um, that shining star for the whole entire season. So many hours in a week alone are de like is dedicated to like spending time in this gym, on this court. From like a team perspective, we were all very much dialed in and had that same mentality. Like we had to be there for each other, for the team, like no matter what that looked like, because it all came down to that, like that moment. We match with UBC pretty well. Um, they're an incredible team, uh, but so were we. And there was a lot of like confidence going into that week. Defending national champions, they were the one seed all year long in the U Sports rankings, so we knew that they were a great team. But thinking back to their national championship run last year, they were in our exact position, like they were a really low seed. They only got in because they were the hosts, just like us, and then they went on to win um, everything. So I think that sort of gave us like a little bit of hope because we were like, if they can do it, I'm in front of their home crowd, like there's no reason why like we couldn't do that. We just want nothing more than to like see each other succeed. And like when we succeed, it's like it's together. It's our phrase for like, I think Mike wrote a uh, article about it was as one. We were working as one, as a unit together. Everything was for each other. Everyone gave everything that they had, regardless of like what that looked like. It's always interesting playing a team you've never played before because you can watch them play on film, but it's no nothing like actually playing. It's stuff that like you know when you're going into the game, but until you're actually playing against it, you maybe like don't realize like the caliber of volleyball that they have. And yeah, I think that whole conference is really talented and they get to play against each other a lot. So it just makes them better and better.
two teams that made their conference final but didn't win in their conference final. The number two UBC Thunderbirds, 10-time national champions, lost in a five-set thriller in their final in Canada West. For McMaster, they lost 3-1 to the Brock Badgers and therefore qualify as the seventh seed and also the host. It's a packed crowd for number two UBC and the hometown McMaster Marauders. Hey, we're gonna get this crowd going. All right, that's gonna be on you guys to get this crowd going. Get this crowd going. The hometown McMaster Marauders dressed in black. The visitors, well, at the higher seed, the UBC Thunderbirds dressed in white. And Lord Brendan, quickly, we were talking about keys to victory. How about McMaster? Offensively, defensively, both their middles, Wook and Hatashta, are high ranked in the OUA in terms of solo blocks. Keeping them engaged offensively and defensively will be a key to success for this team. A look at number two, Jenna Wook from Richmond. Hill, Ontario. She will get us underway for quarterfinal number three. And let's see what UBC offers. Off the block. Success on the first point. Emma Doyle. Hey, you've seen the speed now. You've seen the speed. It's quick. Opportunity UBC. They go off the block to the right side. And the T-Birds out to a quick 3-0 lead. Sandara the return, back tapped over, and then finished off. The good play by McMaster, a little bit creative. Over it goes, courtesy of Hatashta. And then right in the middle, it was buried. And Julianne plays it, Hatashta, beautiful change of pace shots. And all Jost can do is get it over. Lutz, though, solo on the right side. Maddie Lutz with a strong finish. Opportunity Marauders in the middle. Jenna Wolf. 6-1 middle, Jenna Wolf gets up there and just unleashes a powerful hit right past Cosarini on the UBC side. That's going to score all the time. Great serve by Sundara, but UBC played it well. Julienne and Greywall diving. Set up and across off the block, delivered by Borowski. I didn't call timeout here. So we'll get another timeout called by the Marauders. UBC with an 18 to 12 lead. We're playing well. We just got to clean it up a little bit defensively. Here we go. Good scramble by Robert Shaw, and then a roll shot by Vermette. High up in the air, and all Julianne could do is get it over. Good reaction, Sandara. Second attempt, making no mistake, was Cosarini. Roll shot by Vermette. From the back, Sandara fumbled it down the middle. Vintage Sandara. Such a good option for Marauders in system. Back row attack, Sandara's able to capitalize with only one block against her and put that ball down. Cole Pitts doing well. Julianne, great improvisation. Yeah, a little tight set there by Cole Pitts, but Julianne really elevated up and was able to tip it so gracefully over the block and find the court there. Very impressive. They'll go to Greywall. Beautiful cross-court shot by Greywall, 25-19, UBC looking pretty good. We know what it takes now, right? Like the level of play is gonna be high. Stay with it, I like what we did there, but they're gonna defend. There's big seams in their block a lot. We can hit those hard, they're gonna make some digs, right? We're row three here, we're row three, right? Serving, serving, Really looking forward to seeing the Marauders fight back and and get back in the game in this second set. Sandara, though, delivers to make it 2 nothing. Opportunity McMaster. They'll go to Hatashta! Set up one foot takeoff. Hatashta, what a beautiful shot. Rolling off the fingers for one. Set up now for McMaster. Sandara! 
Beautiful placement by Sully Sandara. Wow, what a great shot. After digging that wall and moving outside the court to approach, Sandara able to get up and really nail that ball cross course for Mac to score. Vermette to serve. Cole hits the set for Julianne off the block. Julianne continues to deliver. Gray wall. Robert Shaw back set. Great defense by Brooks. Set up for Sundara. Gray wall. Oh, what a diving play by Lutz, but a composed UBC squad. UBC looking to lock up set number two. Lutz. Shaw, the set coming flying was Vermette. McMaster's turn. Sundara! Is it in? Oh, you bet it is. Did you see that swagger from Sundara? Killed the ball, walking back to the team with so much confidence. That's so great to see as this game is so close. Hey, left side. High seam is so good against them. So good. Love it. Diving return by Vermette. One foot takeoff by Hatashta. And McMaster is rolling here in set number two. This line clips the net, stays in play, and the free hit for Colbert. Set up and sent back. Elizabeth Lee's shot was returned to sender. UBC. The team that's been able to slice an 11 point deficit to four. Julianne, Chase Victoria, Hatashta will get the serve back for McMaster. Beautiful roll serve, great diving play, great ball. Hatashta, athletic block, finished off by Julianne. Julianne to finish. From the back, Sundara. Gray wall, well defended. Oh, no, it's no. gonna go long. Yes. 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 I thought we made like four or five incredible digs in that set, so that's what it's gonna take for us, right? Like crazy good digs. Right spot is, is step one. Step two is a tenacious, we're getting this no matter what. Love what we did there. Losing the first, coming back, and then being able to punch back and beat them in the second. Our entire team, the energy was just there. We walked into that third set being like, we can take this. The left-handed tip, oh, Lutz. Oh, another beautiful roll shot by Lutz. That worked. Wow. So diverse. They'll set it up for Julian. Selecki, perfectly placed. Jost handles it, short set, middle, buried by Doyon, and BC will win. Set number three, 25-21, great pushback by UBC, when they trail back by five. Brooks, McKinnon, Sundara off the net. And the hosts are 
eliminate it. the way that we competed, proud of the way that we gave everything we had against a really, really good team. They had to beat you tonight. No one in this group let anybody else down. Well done. We said all year that we, we believe that we can beat anyone in the country, and I still believe that to be true. On any given day, we beat that team. We have two more teams ahead of us that we now got to prove that against. Uh, and they're going to be in the same exact boat that we are. The exact same boat. Uh, we can't. We can't hold. We can't let up. We can't stop. We can't say what was us. No, no, no. It's not who we are. It was when we were playing well. We were playing really, really well. And uh, it just felt like a little bit at the end of the third set, we made some unforced errors that we don't typically make. And then the fourth set, a couple more unforced errors that we don't typically make. And it's really hard to, it's kind of hard to stomach a little bit now that we're post game and trying to dissect a loss. But overall, I'm, I'm proud of how we played. And I definitely give lots of credit to UBC because I thought they played great. The experience, and you guys had thought about this game, this match for a long time leading up to it. What was the experience like in the gym, and did it live up to what you expected? Um, I definitely think it did. There were so many great moments having just the community around us that have supported us all year, cheering Go Mac Go the whole time, whether we were up or down. And I think just having their support and feeling that like love was something like Sorry. I think that was just really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of tough because, like, we just, you know, invest so much time into this and just to feel the support from everyone, regardless of, like, the outcome. It was, like, something really nice. Obviously, the outcome wasn't what we wanted, but I think there's a lot of good that came out of this and it's like a big learning lesson for just volleyball and like life about taking like just the positives out of it because we can fold tomorrow if we want to dwell but I don't think we will I have faith in our team to just take the good accept the bad and then move on for the girls like it's hard in that moment to not be like this is everything I've worked for and it's I'm I'm failing at what I wanted to work for I think like knowing that there's still so much to be proud of and there's so few people in, in the position that you're in and that are getting the opportunity that you're getting, um, albeit earned. It's important to like have perspective. Yeah, I think it's tough because going into this, like we've known we were gonna play in this game all season and it was sort of like comforting in all of our other losses knowing like we still have something bigger to play for. So for sure, like having this be our like moment was, hard at first. Obviously we wanted to win the OUA championship, we wanted to win a national championship, and it's disappointing um, for a coach as much as it is for a player as well. It's not all about like this year, this moment, it's also about the future of McMaster women's volleyball and recognizing that we still had an opportunity to get the top finish this program has ever had. We still had an opportunity to grow this program, grow this culture for years to come. After we lost on Friday, um, you know, we were all a little bit crushed. Um, 
I think we had like looked forward to that quarterfinals for so long and it was something that we all really wanted to win and then having to like change up our goals in like 12 hours because we knew like the next morning we're going to get up we're going to practice and then we're going to play Brock who's a team that we had just lost to like a week before so we knew there was like a big possibility of us like going 0-2 at nationals um, in front of like our home crowd and that's absolutely not the way that we wanted to go out um, and so I guess like sort of rewriting like the narrative um, you know we wanted to win nationals and then after that game we were like hey we have to now all want to get fifth place and each and every one of us is gonna have to want that because we need everyone in order to um, successfully like do that. That consolation semi is an extremely difficult game to play in. It's not easy and it's not the game you wanted to be playing in, but we have to make the best of it and show up and compete because that says more about our culture and the growth that this culture can have for the future um, to win that game and to fight through that feeling of disappointment and still compete to the best of our ability. It's a privilege to be on this court. No matter what game you're playing for, you made it to nationals, and that is something to be so proud of. Obviously, these teams have seen each other quite a bit, a bit more than the other matchups that we've seen, but, you know, if they can't find the energy within themselves, just the fans being here. Is Rivalry for sure. These two teams met in the Quigley Cup just a week ago where Brock got things done in four sets. They split the regular season head-to-head, -head, evenly matched teams. Brock was the higher seed coming in. That was maybe like one of my favorite games to play. Um, we knew that we had like a lot on the line there. You know, we wanted to win. We wanted to keep playing. We wanted to go for like the best finish that we could. I think just like being in our own gym and having all those like hard discussions like the night before after our loss was like really, really important. I think we played together a lot that day and you could really tell. And yeah, that was, that was just an awesome game to be a part of. The way the girls showed up uh, and the way they competed really shows a lot about our team, shows a lot about this culture and what we expect for the future of McMaster Volleyball to be and how we expect the athletes in this program to carry themselves from now on with that like mentality that we're always going to do better than we did the next year and we're going to keep fighting to do it together as a team. This is how we do this. This is how we continue to be amongst the best. Everyone wants to play, but who wants to be amongst the best? And what are you prepared to sacrifice for yourself and for each other? Here comes Julian! As always, but that was an amazing effort. Beginning to end, that was the experience you were all looking for for this national championship. And now we get to write the end of our own story. Right? Like no one finishes it for us, we get to finish this ourselves. There was months and months and months and months of build up and like ups and downs and like hard work and like sweat, blood, tears, like, and to be able to like show to like our fans like people that like love us that like we're able to like make it this far and we can compete and we like we are those girls like we like finally made it like here and it was just like a wonderful experience and like i've never seen like a crowd like i did like over like the course of nationals just as a kid, I would have probably never pictured myself ever playing in anything remotely like that. So for like the future of um, women's sports and girls, like being able to see that and see all the support and all the people that want to watch us play is a really cool thing. That was like probably the best um, atmosphere that I've ever played in and it was, it was like electric. It was amazing. I've never played a sport at such a high level where like cameras were on you at all times and like people actually care about how you play, what you say, and like who you are. So I thought it was so cool that I got a chance to be on like the Hamilton News, do press conferences, talk to like a bunch of little girls. It was just, I felt so privileged to be on the court at the time. It was so cool. 
it is a little bit nerve wracking because you know there's so many people cheering you on. You don't want to let them down. Um, you want to put on like a good performance and. At the same time, it's sort of surreal because, you know, I'm like, I don't even know, like, how so many people, um, like, want to come watch our games. So it's a really, really cool feeling. I don't think I can, like, exactly put it into words.